Let me be a candle. Let me be a radiant star. Let me be a beacon. Shining who you are. Let me be the miracle I've been dreaming of. Let me be a lantern of your love. Shine through me. Shine through me. Let the light. Within me, help this troubled world to see. Shine through me, shine through me. Use this willing vessel, Holy Spirit. Shine. If a child is hungry, I'll give out of my heart. In the darkest hour, I will lend a light from above. I will be a lantern of your love. Shine through me. Shine. Within me, help this troubled world to see. Shine through me, shine through me. Use this willing vessel, Holy Spirit, shine through me. Shine through me. Shine. Good evening. Let us join together in consciousness as we begin this evening's service. In the quiet of my mind, I relax and breathe. I surrender. What I know in this moment is that there is one power, one infinite creative intelligence that is shining through myself and through each one of us that this energy, this vibration is one of love and possibility. It is the unity, the oneness that we are. So in this moment filled with love and grace and gratitude, I know that today is a gift and a blessing. And that as we move forward this evening, something said or done lifts spirits, inspires new ideas and creates harmony wherever it goes. So relaxed and at peace, I release these ideas into the law of mind where I know it is done, all is well, and so it is. Well, welcome, welcome. So glad to see you here tonight on this beautiful warm night. Let us begin with the land acknowledgement. We are meeting on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit and the Williams Treaty is signed with multiple Mississaugas and Chippewa bands. We're all in this together. We are all one. Well, we have a few announcements. Uh, so I just want to begin by saying, if you haven't signed up for the newsletter, do that, cslonthelake.com, and we'll keep you up to date with all the happenings. Uh, the book club is, it was supposed to start last weekend, but yay, Rogers. 
<laughs> no internet. So um, it's going to start this Saturday instead. It's a five week uh, course, no charge for it. You can purchase the book if you like. It's a really great book. And the uh, we're not going to meet on the long weekend. So it's going to be a couple weeks before and then a couple weeks after the long weekend. So that's going to be a great experience. Also, on Wednesday night, we're starting uh, a Science of Mind uh, drop-in class. So this one, you can drop into any class. And what we're going to do is we're going to discuss some of these concepts and just go really, really deep. So it'll be an opportunity to ask questions, to figure out you know, where you are and what you need to understand or what it is you hope to understand as you move forward. So it's really going to be an excellent uh, time for conversation, but connection, but also taking this teaching in a really deep, deep way. So that begins this Wednesday at uh, 7 p.m. The Memorial Officiant Training is beginning August 10th from 10 to noon. That's Wednesday. So if you're interested, just send me an email and I can get you all of the details on that program. And this Friday on The Joy Show, my guest is Rev Z. He is a minister in Colorado, and he's also a host on the New Thought Media Network. He does a show with uh, Reverend Robert on Friday mornings called Ministers Talking. It's a fun show. Covers the news, but gets into some great stuff. So he's going to be my guest this week. And uh, he's a very interesting man. Uh, I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. And we have the Founding Members Club. We decided to take it through to the end of September. So that would be a one year of giving. And so everything you've given in this past year up to September 30th, we'll all be tallied together and that will show your level of participation in the Founding Members Club. So I invite you just, you know, keep on giving, doing what you're doing. We're doing great. We're moving forward and we're excited to be uh, moving into our new home. So we will be beginning our Monday evening services in September in the new space. And of course, we are going to continue to do online as well. We'll be doing Zoom and YouTube, but also we'll be in person. So that's a very exciting time. And I am super, super stoked to be back, uh, back in front of everybody for real and for true. So watch for the details on that. Ah, well, let us just take a collective breath and let us join together in this time of meditation. And we'll begin with the song, I Allow, I Surrender by Karen Drucker. Oh uh -huh. 
And it is in that place of allowing and surrendering that there comes a moment, a moment of awakened awareness of our oneness, oneness with this divine presence, oneness with each other. What I know in this moment is that through the power of this one, I create health and peace, harmony and love, and move forward in life with a strong vision for a new reality. It is in the surrendering and allowing that I discover that within me, there is this infinite resource, this divine energy. It's fully present in every person, in every moment. It is all powerful, all knowing. And knowing that, I recognize that if it's right here where I am, then I am powerful. And it's allowing that idea to fully land. So I invite you to take a deep breath in and just relax into that place of knowing your oneness with the divine. as I accept that there is only one power in the universe right here where I am, I know that I am a part of it, that the energy and vibration that it is, is within me, moving me forward. It is the energy of love and possibility and opportunity. And so as I relax and as I surrender, I come to know, to realize, and to recognize that I am powerful, that I have the ability to know whatever I need to know. And I am one with everyone, everything on this planet. And it is in that oneness that I find strength, passion, purpose. It is in the oneness that I realize the possibility of creating harmony in our world. So I begin where I am, shifting my consciousness, allowing myself to open up to a greater vision and possibility for life. And in so doing, peace fills my mind and heart. It is with that that I see the potential, the potential for all of us right here, right now to begin a new path forward. So I accept in this moment that through surrender, that everything is possible. And trusting that, I'm filled with gratitude. Gratitude for this day and this moment. Gratitude for this journey, this possibility. Gratitude for love, for laughter, for peace. Gratitude for my awareness of my oneness with all life. And so with a peaceful heart, I release these ideas into the law of mind where I know it is done. All is well. And so it is. Well, thank you so much for being here today. And I just want to say that our vision statement is transforming humanity through the emergence of the sacred authentic self. And our mission is to welcome you as you are where you are without judgment or criticism and providing a sacred place of learning and growing as you seek to achieve your greatest dreams. We offer science mind classes, social events, inspiring workshops, thought provoking services and practitioner support. We honor the revelation of your emerging sacred, authentic self through our positive messaging and loving support. And now Michael Gott with Nearer Than Air.
like the air around me It's like the sunlight on my face I feel the love of God surround me I am touched by amazing And all I ever needed was already there. Closer than the sunlight, nearer than the Like the sunlight on my face I feel the love of God surround me I am touched by amazing grace And all I ever wanted And all I ever needed already there closer than the sunlight nearer than the Oh, nearer than the air. Well, tonight the conversation is absolutely about the oneness that we are. 
So the talk title is the one Ernest Holmes and the Science Mind wrote about unity. And it was interesting this morning because when I opened up my Science of Mind book, which is quite large, I opened it up and the page I opened it to was unity. And I thought, oh, it's not apropos given the message tonight. So he says in there, it is well to remember that the enlightened in every age have taught that back of all things, there is one unseen cause. In studying the teachings of the great thinkers, we find that a common thread runs through all the thread of unity. There is no record of any deep thinker of any age who taught duality. Now, I mean, think about it. Everywhere we look, we're seeing duality. We're hearing, you know, stories about them and us, this and that here and there. But what if it's all this and that? What if everything is a part of this one thing? What if my life is the microcosm of the macro? Cosm, as is yours. So we begin to look at the world through a different perspective as we begin to acknowledge and recognize there's only one thing going on, that every single thing is happening within this one thing. So this teaching of unity, he said, is the chief cornerstone of the sacred scriptures of the East, as well as our own sacred writings. It is today the mainspring of the teaching of the modern philosophies in the New Thought Movement. And every so often we begin to see it in psychology as well. So without this basic teaching of unity, the whole New Thought Movement would have little to offer. Science has found nothing to contradict this teaching and never will for the teaching itself is self-evident that what I think about, I bring about, what I focus on begins to grow and expand. Where I set my intention, I begin to move forward in a way that takes me to where it is that I am striving, striving to go, shall we say. <clears throat> so for example, when I went to Unity Village and my intention was to heal my body, um, I didn't know how, I didn't know when, I didn't know what was gonna occur. I just had a really clear intention that my body would be healed. And on the Thursday, when I went into the session with Dr. Selesh Rowe, who was talking about climate change of all things, it was in that session that the transformation actually occurred. So I don't know why that happened, except that, I was very clear that this is my desire. My intention is to have this healing occur. So now we're, I don't know, three and a half weeks since then, and my body's still strong. I've been able to do some gardening. I've been doing spring cleaning, washing windows, all kinds of things that I could not do a month ago. And the cool part is watching my husband as he's like, wow, <laughs> you're, you're moving around, you're doing fine. We actually were at a wedding last weekend and, and uh, we were able to dance. And, and it was, it's really nice to take a look at how the universe works and to begin to see it in our own lives. And we can all do this. It is not something that one of us can do or you know, somebody else can't do. This is something that's available to all. This divine energy is present in every single thing in the universe. So it's present here with me, it's present there with you. Um, he goes on in the book to say, the first stages of human thought brought out the idea that there were many gods, the natural outcome of life, which experienced many kinds of misfortune and difficulties. But as there were many gods, so there were many devils and, or evil powers. But as the understanding of humans grew, we began to realize that there could not be so many powers. Since the cause back of everything must be oneness, else it couldn't exist. More than one power would indicate a universe divided against itself. And that kind of universe would not hold together. So we come to the conclusion then that there is only one thing and that we live, move, and have our being in it. That the air that we breathe, the words that we speak, the life that we live, all of it is somehow connected in this one 
experience. So there is no heaven and hell. Uh, they are not vacation destination points. Heaven and hell are the experiences that we currently have. On my worst day, I'm in hell, and on my best day, I'm in heaven. And it's all about perception. Consciousness is creating everything. So the idea of the devil or evil, those things actually are not, like the devil does not exist, right? When we speak about this universe, we are speaking about an energy or vibration of love and possibility. Now, we are also also clear that each one of us thinks in and out of it and the way that it moves through us determines our experience so if i am you know really angry and frustrated i'm maybe doing mean things to people in the world then my experience is and may come across as evil but the truth is it's still the same energy it's just the way i use it could be used in different ways so we want to take a look at how we relate to this idea of oneness. When we comprehend it, when we come to a place of going, I am one with all that is, okay? That means I am one with Putin. I am one with every single person, the good, the bad, the whatever, there is a oneness there. So when we come to acknowledge that, the very best thing we can do is begin to go into our own hearts and from there begin to decide the quality of life I choose to live because I can decide that. I'm the one thinking my thoughts. I'm the one creating my life experience. I am the one who is able to use this divine intelligence in a way that will create harmony for my life experience. Now, as I create harmony for mine, because I am one with all that is, that creates harmony for the collective, okay? So when I talked last week a little bit about that idea of selfishness and that it isn't selfish to care for ourselves. In fact, it is essential. If I love myself enough and like myself enough, then I have that to give into the world. If I really don't like who I am, if I have not accepted myself as I am, if I have judgment, criticism, guilt, shame, whatever, what happens is that's the energy that I'm putting into the macrocosm, into that oneness. Okay, so we always have the ability to change our own life experience. That's the only place we can do any work. I cannot change another person. You cannot change another person, but you do have the full ability to change your own life, your own experience, your own stars. And the way you do that is through building consciousness. I've been doing an exercise lately that has been really, really valuable. And it was one that my mentor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Dennis Merritt Jones, whose book we're going to be studying on Saturday, uh, it was an exercise he gave us. And what it is, is to write journal pages every morning. So I write two pages, takes me about 15 minutes. So I write for 15 minutes and I do that every day for seven days. At the end of seven days, I go back and read it. And as I'm reading through it, what I'm doing is highlighting patterns, seeing patterns. Because as I see those patterns, I can begin to see how my life is the way it is. I begin to see how I've created what it is that I'm creating. So this past, uh, I haven't done this week's yet, but last week's, I noticed that I was writing often, I am ready. I am ready. Now, Think about the word ready. I am ready. It doesn't mean I am health. It means I am ready to experience health. It doesn't mean I am prosperous. It means I am ready for prosperity. It doesn't mean that I am experiencing love. It means I am ready. Okay. Now, the challenge with I am ready is that means I'm not there yet. Okay. So the value in this journaling process allowed me to see the way that I am putting my good off into the future. I'm not 
owning it now. So I've now gone through and changed where it is, I am a divine expression of the one. I am health. I am prosperity. I am love. I am peace. I am joyous, excited, delighted. I am. And the I am are the two most powerful words in our language. And we want to use them productively and positively always. Whatever we put behind the I am is exactly what gets drawn into our experience from this universal collective. Okay. So if I'm saying, I, you know, I want this or I want that, what happens is the universe gives me more wanting. I am ready. Okay. I'm ready. But ready is as far as it gets until I go, I own this. You know, I see us in our beautiful new facility and, you know, lots of people and creating a beautiful, fun energy and absolutely creating something beautiful in that moment. So by doing this journaling exercise, I've been able to take a look at any patterns that might be running that are blocking me from the realization of my dreams. And I have big dreams. I have big dreams. I want, I want to share this teaching with the world. So creating that place of, wow, how do I do that? Well, how is not my job? Okay. The universe looks after the how. It's just like me setting an intention about my back. I was clear. I am having this healing this week and a story. I am healed. And it was in my mind, I am healed. And it became my reality, which I am so grateful for. Okay. Pierre can tell you, I've spent 10 years in extreme pain. And I don't have it anymore. Woo <laughs> so what we're talking about here is the fact that we live in a universe that is intelligent. It is powerful. And the only thing moving it in our own lives is our thinking. What I think about life, how I speak about life, that's what I'm bringing into my experience. I want to pay attention to my words, not just the words I speak, but the words that I am thinking. It is my beliefs that are manifesting. It is that subconscious idea inside of me that's creating the world that I'm living in. It's my frustration or resistance that moves me into the place where I currently am. So what I want to do is change that if I want a new experience. Now, sometimes we don't really want to change right? We've got a way of doing things and being in the world. And so we stay with that. But I'm here to tell you that that too is just an idea in mind. Imagine for a moment that you find it in yourself to love yourself so much that you choose to let your light just beam forth into the world. That the light that you are you share so willingly, so beautifully, so brilliantly that the world is transformed by the energy that you're putting out. This is where we want to go. We want to recognize that there is no them and us, this and that. Everything is happening within this one intelligent divine universe. All that it is, I am. It's just like taking a cup of water out of the ocean, right? If I do that, what's in my cup? One cup of ocean water. If I, you know, take it apart and look at it, all the chemical compounds, what I will discover is it is exactly the same as the ocean itself. And so it is for us that we are one with this divine creative intelligence. We're one in the universe. And all that it is, is within us, available for us to use. There are no limitations. There's nothing held back. The limitation is in my own mind. And that I can change. <coughs> Pardon me. So 
as we're as we're moving through this journey of oneness, which we're going to explore in a really deep way come Wednesday night. So you might want to uh, sign up for that class. Just send an email to RevB at CSLonthelake.com and we'll get you signed up. We are coming into a time where we can create a world that is actually peaceful and harmonious. The way that we do that is how we focus our attention, right? Now, we want to focus our attention on peace, joy, love, gratitude, forgiveness, okay? As we do that, we begin to transform our personal experience. Now, because we are all connected, there's an interconnection of every life, what happens is that as I shift my consciousness and raise it to a place of greater love and acceptance, as I accept my soul self as a divine self, what happens is the energy I'm putting into the macrocosm, right? The energy I'm putting in there is lifting everything and everyone, when I'm down and out and feeling yucky, what I'm doing is pulling that energy back down. So the power of one is really important. Each one of us is powerful. Each one of us has the ability to know whatever it is we need to know. Each one of us is a beacon of hope and light and love in the world. And we have the ability to change the world. But it begins right here. It begins with me, it begins with you. So as we're looking at this world that we live in, we might go, oh, but there's a war here and there's a war there. And look at the racial unrest and look at the poverty. And yeah, all of that is really going on. And all of it is created through consciousness. All of it. All of it is created through consciousness. So what is it that I'm thinking about moment by moment? Am I living in fear or am I raising my vibration to one of love? And love means oneness, right? It's where I'm accepting, loving, honoring of myself and others. So the two cannot coexist. Fear and love cannot share the same space, just like light and darkness cannot share the same space. The minute you light a match, the darkness disappears. The minute you flip a light on, the darkness disappears. It cannot remain. Where love is, fear cannot live. So when we're looking at our life and our journey, what we want to do is really pay attention to our belief in duality and is it really serving us or is there something brighter and more beautiful that I could focus my attention on? And if I begin to focus on gratitude, I mean, gratitude of itself is such a powerful thing to, instead of looking at all the little difficulties that are going on around us to sit back instead and go, wow, you know, it was a beautiful sunny day today and, and the wind just brought a nice breeze through the house and freshened everything up and the trees are moving and the birds are singing and, oh, it's such a delight. Or I can go, oh, well, it's getting cloudy now. It's probably going to rain. Oh, well, you know, uh, yeah, I hate this weather and oh, it's so windy. I can't stand it. So we always have the opportunity to focus wherever we choose. But wherever we focus, that is where we are going to begin manifesting, okay? So we want to remember that we are powerful, creative, dynamic beings, and that we have the ability to create something outstanding in our lives. And the way we create it is about the thoughts that we think, the words that we speak, and the actions that we exhibit. All of it has power. All of it has power. It has power so immense that we can't even begin to comprehend it from our finite ego perspective. But powerful we are. I think back 
to when I had a spiritual epiphany at age 27 and I quit smoking. You know, that was a big deal because when I quit, I was smoking four packages a day. I would wake up at night to smoke. I had to empty my ashtrays like on the hour because they were always full. But when I came to that, that deep understanding of my connection with the divine, I knew this is a temple and I didn't have the right to kill it. And I quit. Never had a craving. Never had another thought about it. So three weeks ago in that session, I had a healing and I realized in that moment, again, the body temple and I have become vegan and it's been easy. The food's been great. I've had no challenges with it whatsoever. My husband's a great cook. I'm so grateful, but I've been cooking as well and just coming up with new ways of doing things. And I'm feeling very satisfied. And my body is feeling healthy. So the journey that we're on and the information we receive as we, as we progress is really, it's up to us as to what we're going to do with what it is we learn. When we get a message, and this to me is the most important thing, when you receive a message from the universe, listen listen, <laughs> listen, <laughs> and then act upon what you received. The message I got at that convention was during a talk about climate change and being a vegan and how that would help the planet. But it wasn't even about that. The message was for me, for me to heal my body. If I were to return to eating the old way, I'm sure my pain would return. I got a message. I got a gift. I am honoring that gift. So I invite you to think about, think about your life and think about any area that feels a little discordant or oh, not quite what you dreamed it would be. And I want to invite you to consider journaling. Journal every day and then at the end of seven days just go back and read it and highlight any areas that stand out anything that you notice you're repeating any place where maybe you're a bit negative just highlight those areas and then continue for another seven days and go back and as you do this you might be surprised by the great information that you discover it's an opportunity to change life from mediocrity to brilliance, changing a career from eh, how to ho home to something exciting and, and vibrant. All of us are created in the image and likeness of this divine oneness. All of us are powerful. All of us are unique and special. All of us have the ability to be great in whatever way we feel our calling is, and we all have one. We're all here to do something special. And who knows what it is, but when you get the message, I invite you to follow it. There's only one thing going on, and you are some part of that divine oneness. Ernest Holmes wrote, the world is waking up to the fact that things are not at all what they appear to be that matter and form are but the one substance appearing and disappearing. And that form is simply used to express something which is formless, but self-conscious life. What this life is, science does not attempt to explain. This has been left to theology. Philosophy is also is always transcending science and always will for philosophy deals with cause while science deals with effects. And what we're dealing with here is cause. The first cause of all things is an idea in mind. Consciousness, 
creates. Use it wisely. I love you. There was a time in my life Thought I had to do it all for myself Didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at hand But you are discouraged to run just to make it through another day. Gotta let it go. Gotta let it all go. Are you listening? You got to, got to, got to let it all what you have to say I release and I let go let the spirit run my life and my heart is open wide yes I'm only here for God no, no more struggle no more strife with my faith I see the light I am free Reverend Michael God, he's got some energy. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, what a delight to have you all here today. And it is that time in our service when we pass the virtual basket. And I invite you that any gifts that you give, that you give it with the energy of love and peace and gratitude, knowing that as we give, so shall we receive. And so let us say together the opening affirmation or the <laughs> offering affirmation. Together, please. Divine love consecrates my gift. It goes forth to heal, to bless, to prosper. It is evidence of my conviction and it does its good and perfect work and returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. And there are a few ways to give. You can give by e-transfer to RevB at cslonthelake.com or go to our website and through Tithely, just hit the give link and you can give that way. And checks, of course, can be mailed to Center for Spiritual Living on the Lake, 38 Kootenai Crescent in Toronto, M1J1R7. And of course, all donations are tax deductible. 
and those come out in February. So let us join together in consciousness as we close this service in a way that we do all things with a little bit of treatment. Join with me. I recognize the one power and presence in the universe and I recognize it is here where I am. I know that I am one with it, that in the unity of all life, there is only one thing going on and each and every one of us live, move and have our being within that dynamic energy. So I know as we move into this week that there is love realized, prosperity realized, health realized, that things are beautiful, warm and inviting, that something tremendous occurs because of the time we spend together, that somehow in some way there is a shift in consciousness, there is a, a lifting and expanding, there is a joyous celebration of what is and what will be. So today I know that all that I dream about, all that I imagine is already a reality. So with a truly grateful and humble heart, I release these ideas into the law of mind, knowing that all is well, all is good. I let it be, and so it is. And now Karen Drucker, and thank you for this day. And stick around for a chat after. Say thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, mm -hmm. thank you, cause I'm so grateful, so grateful, oh grateful, I'm so grateful, so I want to say thank you for this day, spirit, thank you for this day, thank you for this day, spirit, thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing.
I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I wanna just say thank you now. Just thank you now. 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 Each and every day I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say, say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody, welcome, welcome. Now we can chat and you can unmute yourselves. I believe I've hit the right buttons. Ruby, hello. How are you, my dear? Good, thank you. Good, good. I'm getting better. Oh, yay, that's great news. <laughs> Have you stopped the recording? Oh, 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 thank you. Let me 